Welcome once again to the leadership and management revision session. We began the revision of the paper that was done in December 2021. So far, we've done question number one. Today, I'm going to answer the second question. Part A of this question reads, Roman 1, with respect to foundations of uh, management, differentiate between scientific management approach and behavioral management approach for Max. This is a uh, leadership and management, December 2021, question 1A. differentiate between differentiate between the scientific management approach and the behavioral management approach now candidates according to frederick taylor the scientific management scientific management in its essence consists of uh, a philosophy which results in a combination of four important underlying principles of management. Four, all right? Number one is the development of a true science. Number two is the uh, scientific selection of workers. Number three is the scientific education and development, all right? And scientific management not only developed a rational approach to solving organizational problems, but also contributed a great deal to the professionalism of management where we had uh, time and motion studies, uh, the scientific selection of workers, the work design, and one best way to do a job. Those are some of the suggestions of uh, Taylor. All right? Scientific management. And scientific management was the second phase in the development of the management thought stemming from the classical approach, all right? The classical approach, the classical approach then came the scientific uh, 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 management, uh, approach to management. Then after scientific management, during the same period, uh, there came the development of uh, the behavioral management thought. And the behavioral management theory is often called the human relations movement because it addresses the human dimensions of work. Behavioral theories believe that a better understanding of human behavior at work, such as motivation, conflict, expectations, uh, group dynamics improve, Im, I, improves productivity of the workers. The human approach, candidates, is a progressive development as compared to the classical approach or the scientific management approach, where we, uh, the, the, the organization focuses on the cooperation of employees, team spirit, uh, um, satisfaction of uh, employees. All that is treated as factors useful for raising productivity, other than focusing on work. The behavioral management theory focuses on the worker. And the human relations uh, approach has put special stress on the social needs and the role of management in meeting 
uh, such needs. The question is, differentiate between the scientific management approach and the behavioral management approach. Now, when faced with such a question in an exam room where you are required to differentiate two things, it's advisable you have the differences in form of a table in columnar format. So that on one hand here we're going to have scientific management theory and behavioral management thought. Scientific behavioral, the differences. In my introduction, I mentioned that the scientific management theory emphasizes scientific study of work methods. Scientific management theory emphasizes scientific study of work methods to improve work efficiency. The behavioral approach, on the other hand, emphasizes the importance of understanding various factors of uh, human behavior. So this one emphasizes the scientific study of work methods, whereas the behavioral management emphasizes the importance of understanding factors affecting human behavior. We are talking of behavioral. Emphasizes factors affecting understanding of human behavior. That is the first distinction. The second distinction is that uh, the scientific management theory focus or focuses on achieving the task in the most effective and efficient way. It does what? Focuses on achieving a task. Focuses on achieving a task in the most effective and efficient way possible. Whereas the behavioral management theory stresses or stressed the need for human skills rather than technical skills. Focuses on the need for human skills rather than technical skills. This focuses on techniques, technical skills, how to achieve a task in the most effective and efficient way. Behavioral focuses on or stresses on the need for human skills rather than the technical skills. That's the second distinction. The third difference is that under the scientific management theory, jobs were allocated to people without matching the, 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 the job to the worker's skill and ability. Whereas the behavioral management theory encourages participation of workers in decision-making authority at all levels. Employees not actively involved in decision making. 
the scientific management approach, employees were not actively involved in decision making. For example, when it came to the selection of employees, the selection of employees under scientific management theory was done scientifically. Jobs were allocated to uh, people or employees without their participation or involvement. On the other hand, behavioral management approach encourages participation of workers in decision making. Encourages participation of employees in decision making at all levels. At all levels. Because the behavioral approach emphasizes factors affecting understanding of human behavior. It focuses on the need for human skills rather than technical skills. So the worker is a focus. So when it comes to making decisions involving the worker, then the workers are, uh, 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 are encouraged to participate, to air their views and so on. That is the third difference. Next point, number four, is that uh, the scientific management theory emphasizes motivation of workers through monetary rewards. Emphasized motivation of workers through monetary rewards, whereas behavioral uh, management approach, workers are motivated employees are motivated through monetary rewards and other social factors like praise, like sense of belonging, like pride in work, and so on. So here, the employee is not only motivated through monetary rewards, but also other social factors, like meeting the social needs of the employee, the sense of belonging. So there are a range of um, factors, social factors, not just monetary factors. In fact, the emphasis here is on the intrinsic factors of motivation, other than intrinsic factors like monetary rewards. Emphasis is on intrinsic and motivation. So these are four differences. They are not the only differences. The other difference could be, other difference, additional difference could be that uh, the scientific management approach resulted into many confrontations between the management and the workers because workers were seen as objects. They were seen as machines who are to uh, just uh, help in the production of many or, 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 or efficiency in production and so on. But behavioral approach, the human relations and the social needs of workers are crucial aspects of business management. That's an additional difference. The candidates were to give four to earn four marks, four differences, one difference, the second difference, the third difference, and the fourth difference, four marks. 
this is Aeroman 1. Aeroman 1. Then we have A Roman 2. Roman 2. A Roman 2. The question is explain six applications of scientific management approach in the manufacturing sector. Applications of scientific management approach. Now, what are the applications of scientific management approach in manufacturing? That's the question. Now, the first application is in relation to rational thinking. Scientific management approach emphasizes rational thinking. Science is all about rational, rational thinking. Taylor suggested rational thinking on the part of management for improving efficiency and productivity. Taylor wanted management to replace old methods, old techniques by modern methods which will then raise productivity and offer benefits to all concerned parties and today that's what is happening managers are trying to replace the old methods of uh, uh, doing things uh, managers are trying to, uh, to 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 automate processes procedures and so on so that um, all the parties the shareholders the stakeholders can benefit taylor was in favor of progressive scientific rational thinking uh, on the part of management on all managerial problems and such progressive uh, outlook is essential for the introduction of new techniques uh, new methods in management we have seen recent development in uh, production of goods and services where um, uh, most companies especially in the first world are moving towards uh, uh, manufacturing of uh, products and, and goods uh, through uh, robots and such like uh, trends. So one application of scientific management approach is rational thinking. There is uh, also introduction of better methods. Introduction of better methods, better techniques, in production. When managers think scientifically, when managers think rationally, then that is most likely to lead to introduction of or invention of better methods and techniques in production. Taylor suggested the importance of improved methods and techniques of production. That is what is happening in the manufacturing industry today. Manufacturers are always thinking of improvement, continuous improvement, Kaizen. There is always room for improvement. The work study techniques are uh, to be improved on a continuous basis. Taylor suggested new methods after a systematic study and research and recommended the use of new methods of raising overall efficiency and productivity. All right. So there is that application of Introduction of better methods and techniques in, pro in, in production in the manufacturing sector today. There is also emphasis on planning. Today in the manufacturing uh, sector, there is emphasis on planning. There is emphasis on controlling production. 
before engaging in manufacturing, which is a conversion of raw materials into finished products, there has to be proper planning. There ought to be also systems in place to control the process of manufacturing. And Taylor suggested the importance of product planning or production planning control for high production, for superior quality production, and also for low cost production. And he introduced the concept of production management in a systematic way. Today, all manufacturers apply this concept of production management. Okay? Emphasis on planning and controlling production. The fourth application is in regard to the personnel. Of personnel and the personnel department. In the manufacturing sector today, almost all companies have personnel departments, which is um, the departments which are given resources to ensure that manpower or employees are scientifically selected. They are trained to help the companies in the process of converting raw materials into finished products. Taylor suggested the importance of manpower in management. He was in favor of progressive personnel policies for the creation of efficient and satisfied labor force. We saw here the emphasis of, of scientific management as far as motivation is concerned is through mainly monetary rewards. That is the case in the manufacturing sector today. Employees are, in some companies, paid on piece rate a basis so that employee who produces more is paid more and so on. He also suggested the need of personnel department and its importance. He favored the incentive wage payment to workers as opposed to the classical approach where workers were paid on time basis. Here, workers were paid on piece rate basis, incentive. There is also the question on industry fatigue. Industry fatigue. Industry fatigue, the stress of work, and rest process. Industry what? Fatigue. Taylor noted the nature of industrial fatigue and suggested the introduction of suitable rest pauses. The purpose for rest pauses is to remove such fatigue of workers. He wanted to reduce the burden of work on workers through the use of scientific methods. That's why today we have workers uh, uh, appearing at uh, the workstation in sessions, in shifts. Those who go rest, then others come in. So they have rest hours, rest pauses to deal with industry fatigue. Number six, time and motion study. Time and motion study. Taylor introduced new concepts like uh, time study, motion study, work study in the field of industrial management. 
and such concepts are for the introduction of new methods which will be quick, scientific, and less troublesome to workers. Today, companies are studying the motion of work, they are studying uh, time, and so on. So these are applications of scientific approach to scientific approach in the manufacturing sector. Six marks. One, two, three, four, five, six, six marks. Part B, describe five steps in, in involved in decision making. Describe five steps involved in decision making, five marks. Steps involved in decision making. The first step is problem definition. Before you make a decision, and then in the company or corporate setup, the decision making involves problem solving. In other words, you're solving problems. So before you problem is solved, a, the problem has to be defined. Problem definition is the first step in the decision making process. It begins with the manager identifying the real problem. Because the accurate definition of a problem affects all the steps that follow. And if the problem is inaccurately de defined, every step in the decision making process will be based on an incorrect starting point. So one way that a manager can help determine the true problem in a situation is by identifying the problem separately from its symptoms. And the most obviously troubling situations found in an organization can usually be identified as symptoms of underlying problems. And these symptoms all indicate that something is wrong with an organization. But at times they don't identify the root causes. So a successful manager does not just attack symptoms. He works to uncover the factors that, that, that cause the symptoms. Accurate definition of the problem. And it has been said that a problem well defined is a problem half solved. Now after identifying and defining the problem, the manager should identify limiting factors. Identify limiting factors. Because all managers want to make the best decisions. And to do so, managers need to have the ideal uh, resources. That is information resource, time resource, personnel resource, equipment, supplies, and then identify any limiting factors. And realistically, managers operate in an environment that does not provide ideal resources. For example, they may lack the proper budget or may not have the most uh, accurate information or even extra time. So it's important after identifying a problem to identify the limiting factors. Now once the problem has been identified and uh, limiting factors are put down, the managers can develop potential alternatives. Develop potential alternatives to develop potential alternatives. And time pressures, 
frequently calls a manager to move forward after considering only the first or the most obvious alternative or answer. Potential alternatives, these are alternative solutions. And I'm saying there are times that uh, a manager may not have time because time here could be one of the limiting factors. The manager may not have enough time to consider many answers to the problem. And later on, uh, uh, we in, in, we, we, in our revision sessions here, we've seen different approaches to decision making. There are different models on decision making based on or depending on the limiting factors. A manager may be required to make a decision in an instant. He may not have time to uh, find out alternative solutions. He may be required due to the constraint on time to make an instant decision. Successful problem solving requires thorough examination of the challenge because a quick answer may not result in permanent solution. And therefore, a manager should think through, a manager should investigate several alternative solutions to a single problem. Before doing what? Before making a quick decision. And uh, we've also discussed here the uh, different um, ways in which alternatives can be generated. One of them being brainstorming, where a group of managers come together to generate ideas and alternative solutions. So developing potential alternatives, in other words, is, means generation of potential answers to the problem. Okay. Number four, analyze the alternatives or alternative solutions. Analyze the alternative solutions. The purpose of, for this step is to decide the relative merits of each alternative solution. And managers may identify the advantages and disadvantages of each alternative uh, solution before making a final decision. And evaluating the alternatives can be done in numerous ways. All right. Then, after the analysis is done, after considering each and every alternative solution based on the merits and demerits, cost benefit analysis, and so on, then the next obvious step is to select selection of the best alternative. There has to be a criteria for selecting the best alternative. After a manager has analyzed all the alternatives, she or he must decide on the best one. And the best one is one, or is one that produces the most advantages and the fewest disadvantages. And sometimes the selection process can be fairly uh, straightforward based on the analysis done in the previous stage. And at times you may find that a solution to a problem or the best alternative could be a combination of several alternatives. 
nonetheless, the manager must select one best alternative. Implement, implement the decision. After selecting the best decision, then implement it. Why? Because managers are paid to make decisions. But they are also paid to get results from such decisions. And therefore, positive results must follow decisions. And everyone involved with the decision must know his or her role in ensuring successful implementation of the outcome or the decision. And to ensure that employees understand their roles, the managers must thoroughly devise programs, procedures, rules, policies to help aid in the problem solving process. There has to be communication because all this is done by the manager. It may involve employees at some point to get information, but it is the role of the manager to select the best alternative. Then this implementation is carried out by employees and therefore the manager has to design programs, he has to devise programs, procedures, rules and policies and communicate to the employees on how the decision should be implemented. Then the next step, establish a control and evaluation system. Establish a control and evaluation system. Why? Because the ongoing process of implementing the decision need to be monitored. And therefore, an evaluation control system should provide feedback on how well the decision is being implemented, what the results are, and what adjustments are necessary to get the results that were intended when the solution was first chosen. So control and evaluation system, the last step in the decision making process. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How many marks? Uh, five marks. In most literature, you'll find this one being highlighted. Then after that step, you find that step. Then you have this step and that one plus this one. Students who provided problem definition develop potential alternatives, select the best alternatives, implement the decision, control and evaluation, you still earn the five marks. So that is uh, the end of this question, December 2021, question two, leadership and management. Thank you for your time. I'll see you in the next session where we'll answer question three. Bye. <laughs>